thank God. And I mean, I get it. It's it's so satisfying. Like I find myself hungry for it all the time. I can eat barbecue. I promise you. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's mine. All right. And I find myself in a bite. It's like, oh my gosh, this tastes so ridiculously good. But what I hate about that is that when something comes along and takes my appetite, I hate that. I hate it when I'm so hungry, when that, when that food it gives me what I need to face the challenges that day, when it literally gives my body the energy to do what it needs to do. When something comes in and destroys that appetite, I hate it. And I bet you that there's some people in here tonight that probably have a really gross story as to why you lost your appetite at one point, and they're probably that sick that I don't want to hear it, but at the same time, I kind of do. So if you wouldn't mind kind of telling me those stories after service, that would be kind of awesome. But I'm going to be totally honest with these views. Tonight, that's, that's my concern for every single person that's in here. I have a concern for you that, that you come here on Sunday nights and that you worship next door passionately, but then something comes and, and takes that holy hunger. I really believe that you guys come here and that you love life and that you love Fuse and you love Pastor Justin and all the awesome leaders that you guys have here, but your hunger, your appetite is dependent on how your week is went. You all might come here, you might be feeling great, but then you don't get to sit in the same seat that you always would like to. That you don't get to sit beside that girl or boy that you like, and then you have to go like this to look down the aisle, and then I see you when I'm preaching. All right, but some of you have some more legitimate reasons. Perhaps you've maybe got something going on at home. Maybe you've got something going on in your school. Maybe you're struggling for grades. Maybe you're, you're getting bullied and you're getting a really difficult time even outside of your home. And that, and that hunger disappears. I want to share a story with you tonight about these two guys. And I'm gonna, you're going to hear me say this verse a lot. Blessed are those who are hungry and who thirst for righteousness. Blessed means highly favored. It means highly fortunate. It means God has your back. It means that God will give you everything that you need to get through your situation. And your situation will change because He is greater than that. Man. And if you stay hungry for Him, I promise you tonight, Fuse, that your situations will change. And, and this story that I'm going to share with you is about two so guys, I'm sure you've never heard this story before, before Paul and Silas. All right, these guys, if anybody had a reason to, to lose their hunger, to lose their appetite for God, it was these two men. And you're going to hear about this now. You can read this story, man. I really encourage you guys to read it. It's Acts 16, verses 16 to 40. Now, before you all have a heart attack on me, I'm not going to read all 24 verses, all right? I just want to throw it out there. I want you guys to, I want to encourage you guys to read that scripture. Acts 16, verses 16 to 40. But this is, I'm going to summarize it for you tonight. This is what happened. So Paul and Silas, God sends them. All right, anytime you read about somebody in the book of Acts, God usually sent that person. So God has sent Paul and Silas to this one particular place to pray. And on that journey, they, they, they seem to always encounter this woman who is actually possessed by a demon. All right, series and strings, woman possessed by a demon. It kind of links in with that. You all agree? Yeah. All right, good. Glad you're still looking. So anyway, these guys are, are walking down there, and, and then this woman is always shouting out. She's always like, oh, yeah, here comes the servants of the Most High God. They're going to tell you what you can do to be saved. Now, Paul and Silas were sent by God, and those words were true, but y'all, she wasn't sent to be nice. She was like kind of making fun of them. She was making, well, what, what would you guys call that in America? Making fun of somebody? Mocking them? I don't know what you said. I don't understand y'all from American accent. But listen, this woman, this woman, all right, she's, she's making fun of Paul and Silas. And bear in mind that God has sent them to go to this place. And she's continually making fun of them. And, and Paul just kind of gets fed up with it. And he turns around and he just shouts, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out. And immediately, this demon, it, it comes out of the woman. It's crazy. It's just like that. Just because he, he called in the name of Jesus Christ. And I wonder how many people in here tonight, in your situations, need to call on the name of Jesus Christ to do something about your situation. Because he's always there. Pastor Brad said to me in service, all you got to do is lift your head to him and pray to him. And I promise you, he hears your every single prayer. When you give God your prayers, he gives you hope. He gives you peace. He gives you a reason to continue going on in that situation instead of looking for the easy way out. And Paul turns around and is like, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out. And immediately, this demon comes out. So anyway, this... 
This fortune teller, she was a fortune teller, and her bosses aren't happy now, simply because they can't use this lady to, to make them money. So they decided to, to gang up on Paul and Silas, and they literally dragged them down to the marketplace in front of everybody. That's like me dragging you all down to, like, I don't know, OP Mall or something like that, or St. John's Town Centre, something like that, like in public where everybody can see him, like, hey, these guys are causing issues, we're losing that money, what are you all going to do? And, and they, they decide to punish them, and they strip them totally naked. They strip them naked in front of all of those people at the marketplace, and then they decide to beat them with rods. Can, can, I want you to, to honestly put yourself in that situation. God has sent Paul and Silas to this place. They're, they're just doing what God asked them to do. And now they've been mocked, they've been dragged along the ground, then they've been stripped, then they've been beaten almost to death by rods. And to make matters worse, the, the authorities decide to throw them into jail. And they say, listen, let's put, let's put chains around their ankles. Let's put them chained up. Let's lock them in to make sure that they don't escape. And that's where we're at. And I just want you guys to know that I understand what it's like being your age. I've been there. And I, I bet you that there are students out there that you're listening right now. And I guarantee that you're feeling broken like Paul and Silas. Or that you're feeling bruised. That you're feeling locked up. That you're feeling chained. You're feeling that you can't escape this situation that you're currently in. But I want to tell you right now that if you stay hungry for God, blessed are those who are blessed are those that hunger and that thirst for righteousness for them will be filled and situations change when you stay hungry. And that's exactly what happened in, in verse 26. And these guys, these two guys had every single reason at this point to say, God, not I'm out, I'm done, I'm through. I'm walk away. But they didn't. Even after God sent them, even after they were beaten, stripped naked, beaten half to death, thrown in jail, locked up, they still kept their hunger. And when you stay hungry, students, I promise you, your situations will change. Verse 26, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. How many people in here tonight want an earthquake to strike so you all can loosen the chains that you feel are around you and that you want to break free from that? You want to escape your situation. But what I love about this is verse 27. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. We're all here. Paul and Silas' chains were literally, they, they were bound to know that God sent that earthquake. That God sent that earthquake so the chains around their ankles could be loosened. And they decided to stay there. We're all here. Now, put yourself in those shoes. If I was them, and I was beaten, stripped naked, thrown into jail with chains around my ankles, and I knew that God sent an earthquake to release me, I would have been gone. You see them both? I'm coming after your Olympic record. I'm coming after you. I would have been gone. But they stayed there. We're all here. The jailer called for lights. He rushed in, fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, I love this. Serge, what must I do to be saved? Amen. These two verses speak to me. These two verses are what keep me going. Man, their chains fell off, but they turned around and said, we're all here. If that was us, we would have been long gone. But they understood that despite their situation, God had sent them. And do you know what? They ministered to that one guy in their situation. They ministered to that one person in their situation. When they had an opportunity to run, they understood that God was still in control because God is also known as the Alpha and the Omega. God is not bound by time. And if you're not bound by time, then you always have the last say. And whoever has the last say is always in control. Yeah. And God is greater than your situations because he's still in control of them. Yeah. No matter where you're at right now, he's greater. He's still in control. He has your back. And these guys, they, they understood that, they knew that, and they ministered to the one. Students, whatever you're going through right now, I want to stop for a moment and, and kind of sidetrack from this, but I want to encourage you. 
Who's the one in your situation? Regardless of what's happening in your life right now, I promise you, if you stay hungry, then you will be blessed. Your situation will change. But I challenge you right now to think about the situation that you're in. Who's the one that you can minister to right now? In your situation, who is the one that you can minister to right now? Because not only was the jailer then saved, but his whole household were then saved. They were immediately baptized. Situations change when you stay hungry. The situation changes for you, but it also changes for those around you. 